Hi there, and welcome to Thoughts Over Coffee, giving you the time and the space to think and connect with others. So if you've got five minutes, join us for today's video and podcast. And thanks very much if you're listening on the podcast. So today, we're looking at how do we build a culture of originality? The interesting piece is here, quite often when we pull people together to look over ideas or ask for ideas, we always ask the same people, people that are very much like us, people that we work with very, very closely in our teams, people that often think the way that we do. The question here though is, where does the originality come from? And I can give you an example recently where I had to redesign our office space. And what did I do? I actually asked people that were involved in it, but they were people that work very, very closely with me. Not necessarily thinking about the people that might challenge me more to think about how we actually set up the environment. So this is what I wanna look at today. How do we take that sense of originality and bring that forward? So I've got three very quick tips for you today. So the first one is give employees the opportunity and the incentives to generally to generate new ideas on a continuous basis. Make it the norm, make it widespread, not just the select few, but go out wider to the whole team and also go out wider to peers and other people that you may interact with. With this, you'll get a wider range of ideas and thoughts coming at you and therefore a greater chance of having an original idea coming from someone else. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, is get the right people to vet the ideas. Now, what does this mean? Before we take a look at this a bit further, don't forget, if you're getting great value from today, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button to our channel so you get videos updated to your inbox every two days when we upload. So what we're actually talking about here about getting the right people to vet your ideas is we're actually talking about don't give it to the negative people, don't give it to the positive people, give it to a wide range of people. Because again, if you give the ideas to someone who thinks and comes across like you, you're gonna get your own ideas mirrored. So make sure that you have a wide cross section of people actually looking at these ideas to vet them and to expand those ideas even further. And therefore, they're not similar to your own. Now we come to the third and final one. And don't forget the comments continue under the YouTube video. So if you're on the podcast, please remember to click the button for the YouTube video. And if you're on YouTube, please leave your comments because I'd love to know your thoughts down below. So we start connecting with other people. So the third and final part is about cohesion and also dissent. So it's very common in a very hierarchical system and in a hierarchical business that people will not necessarily challenge, which is great, But actually, is it? If you don't encourage dissent and doing it in the right way, in a constructive way, you're not gonna get other people to give you original ideas or to even do the basic thing, which is, actually, why do you say that? Challenging back and making you think further about your thoughts and ideas. So make it a norm, make it a value and behavior that you really, really want. And if you start embedding this and living this, actually, the first two points become so much easier because people will be in that mindset to challenge and to help you to regenerate your ideas to come up with complete originality. There you go, three tips to help you with building a culture of originality within your business. And let's face it, now more than ever, that originality is really, really needed to have a competitive advantage. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening if you're on the podcast and we'll see you very soon in the next one. Take care. Bye.